this is the High Boy P6, a four inch fat tired electronic mountain bike hardtail, and I believe it's all the mountain bike you probably need, and for less than a thousand dollars. Let's go over the basics of what this is. This High Boy P6 is a hardtail fat tire e-mountain bike. And I think the big part of that sentence is e-mountain bike is that a lot of e-bikes now uh, are not really built to pedal, whether it's the moped style, commuter style. They're basically electric motorcycles that uses the pedals as a way to skirt laws so that they can be ridden on bike paths and ridden places where an electric motorcycle can't be. This is a little bit different. This is still based off of a bicycle frame. If, if this did not have an e-assist, this would still feel like a regular bicycle. You have your adjustable saddle, the geometry of it, your pedals aren't you know, coming up past your knees while you're riding it. So this is still a bicycle. And I think that's one of the big distinction that's happening in the market right now is you have big brand companies like Specialized and Giant and Yamaha making e-mountain bikes. And then the upstart companies are making more e-motorcycles and throwing pedals on them. What I like about this, even though the specs may be small, and I'll get to those in a second, is that when you ride this, it's fun out in places like this. It really feels like you're still riding a mountain bike as someone who grew up riding mountain bikes. So let's get in some of the specs. The first one everybody wants to know about is the motor. This is a brushless geared hub motor made by Bafang, which is like the number one manufacturer of these things. So that's awesome to see. And it's 750 watts nominal, and then it peaks to about 1200. The battery is the other big thing everybody wants to know about is 13 amp hours, about 13 amp hours, which is on the smaller side. But again, more in line with like a big brand bike that you're actually meant to pedal like Specialized or somebody, they would put a smaller battery like this. When what that does is keep the weight down. And this bike only weighs 65 pounds, which in bicycle terms is heavy, but in e-bike terms, it's not that heavy, especially for under a thousand dollars. The front uh, fork here, the suspension, is a hydraulic fork that has 80 millimeters of travel. And it does have compression and preload adjustment. Um, I can't figure out how to do rebound adjustment, but uh, it does have it does have compression preload and it does have a lockout feature which is handy if you actually have to pedal this thing another place where this bike stays under a thousand dollars is the brakes on this are a little bit budget JAK these are mechanical disc brakes um, they do stop the bike but um, you know they're not going to be as, as powerful as something like some hydraulic brakes even some uh, cheaper brakes like Tektro hydraulic brakes would be much stronger than this but this is built to a budget the seat on this is a big cushy High Boy branded bike seat, which is super nice. And then if you didn't like this seat, uh, of course this is interchangeable. And what I would love to put on this bike is a dropper post. I think a dropper post on this would uh, probably be the only upgrade I would make to it if you actually wanted to come out here and ride stuff like this. Because again, the benefits of an e-bike, you can e-assist out to a beautiful place like this and then bomb the hills and then maybe bomb the hills four or five more times than you wouldn't do because you have e-assist to help you get back up to the top. So I think a dropper post on this would be an awesome, an awesome upgrade. But the seat that it comes with is very nice. Uh, another thing that I like about the controls, even though this is built to a budget, is that here you have a, a dedicated light and horn button. So if you are on your bike path, you do have a dedicated horn button and you have a dedicated light button. And the light on this is very bright. You do not get a tail light, you get a uh, plastic reflector here. Now you do get five modes of e-assist. Very simple. You have your on off and you have your up and down for your e-assist and that's pretty much all you need to mess with. And I pretty much either have it in one for like a bike path or anywhere out here like this. I pretty much just leave it on five. And then you do have a nice little twist throttle over here. Now looking back here at your, your gears here, you have a Shimano Altus gear set, which is a one by nine, and uh, it seems to be working really well. And it came out of the box in adjustment. Some of these e-bikes, they come and they're slightly out of adjustment, need a tune up, but this one didn't. It came out uh, good to go. And a one by nine is nice because sometimes these bikes only come with like a one by eight or a one by seven. And it's nice having a little bit more gear ratio because with a bike like this, you actually want to pedal it a little bit. Like you actually, it's, it's fun to pedal. These, these tires, uh, I, they're max PSI. They recommend on the side of these Chow Yang tires is 20. I've got 12 in them right now. And that seems to be really nice for absorbing some of this loose, rocky bumps and ruts. And uh, you, see, you see down here, there's a lot of big rocks and that kind of seems to take away some of that harsh hit of them. To keep with the budget, this is a cadence sensor, which is not my favorite. It is just looking for, for wheel spin 
before it kicks in uh, energy from the motor. And it's not actually looking at how hard you press, only that the pedals are spinning. So if you cut the, the chain off of this and you were to turn these pedals, it would still give power to this back wheel because it's not sensing torque, it's just sensing pedal speed. But sometimes that can be a pro because what if you broke your chain? You could still use the throttle and get back, or you could still turn the pedals and get back without a chain, which is kind of a nice safety backup. Now I think I'm gonna take it up here on some of this beautiful single track up here. Well, it's really more of a donkey trail than single trail, single track. But I'm gonna take it up here and see how it handles on this because I think that's where this bike is meant to be. All right, again, the great part about e-bikes is that let's say after work or uh, even after the gym or whatever, you're a little tired or you live far away from the trails, you can use the e-assist feature on the boring parts, the pavement, the gravel, uh, getting away from the, the parking lot just a little bit farther than maybe you normally would have. And then you can start having fun on the actual trails. Um, and that's where this one really shines, this bike is that it's still an actual mountain bike. And that's where this bike, even though it's a thousand dollars, is still a lot of fun. That battery's not huge, but I'm not looking to commute a hundred miles on this bike. I'm just looking to get a little bit farther away from the parking area, separate myself from the other people a little bit, and then have fun on my mountain bike. There's a lot of e-bikes I would never want to ride on stuff like this, but on this bike, it's super fun. The front fork is a little bit, it rebounds a little bit quick. I wish there was a rebound adjustment, um, but again, with this budget, that's something you could upgrade later and get a little bit better fork. I think a little bit better fork and a dropper post, and this, this bike would be set. This just gives you that little bit more freedom and confidence to maybe turn down a road like this. Those big fat tires are game changers soaking up this, this, these rocks. It doesn't have rear suspension. But that fat tire is a pretty good semblance for it. <laughs> All right, see if we can ride up this wash with some E assist, of course. Actually, it's going to be all E assist. What I like about e-assist, man, look at that. That's a really impressive. What I really like about e-assist on a bicycle, it allows you to keep both your feet on the pedals through a tricky section. Um, where normally you'd have to be pedaling, which is an optimum. Whew. I would not have done that on a regular bicycle. I never would have made that climb back out. On a regular bicycle, when you spin out or lose traction, uh, you have to put a foot down. You know, every time you, you, your, your foot spins around and goes down to the bottom of the pedal strike, you stop moving, you have to put a foot down. But on an e-bike, I use the throttle, keep it whacked wide open, and the back tire can spin while I'm helping it. And so that really helps you get over obstacles that you couldn't normally with an e-bike. All right, let's go find a big, long, flat area and see if we can give this thing its best shot. I'll give a little head start to get it up to speed with pedaling and then I'll whap the throttle open. All right, let's get going. All right, there's the top speed. There's 28. So I had a little bit of a wind going the other way.
So we did see 28 for just a second. This thing is not a, a spec princess, you know, that doesn't seem amazing on paper, but actually riding this bike is a lot of fun being it's so light. Well, we got 28 miles an hour, if just for a second, but we did hit it. Now that's not the perfect place where you could do a speed test in the loose sandy gravel road like that, but we did see it hit 28. And um, the other nice thing is with that nine speed, you're not ghost pedaling until you get up up above near the top speed, then, then you feel the ghost pedal kick in. But some of the other bikes, the ghost pedal feels like it kicks in a lot sooner. So I think what we're gonna do now is let Elizabeth take this thing for a ride. She hasn't done quite as much motorcycle and bicycle riding as me so maybe get her perspective and she's a little lighter than i am probably by 50 pounds so um, see what she thinks about this thing as chris said uh, i don't have an extensive background in motorcycle riding or bicycles you know i was taught how to ride a bike when i was little and that's about as far as my uh, bike journey has gone so now that we've kind of been introduced to the e-bike world i've gotten a bit more comfortable So some of these bigger obstacles like rocks and boulders and these whoops can make me a little nervous, but um, I like using the throttle over it. Uh, it kind of feels like riding a motorcycle with a clutch. If I feel like I have better control of the speed and I feel like I can bounce better. So I actually prefer to ride throttle only for a lot of this. Um, I've also had a bad habit of hitting the pedals <laughs> on rocks <laughs> when trying to pedal. So um, I love the throttle only feature. It's just so nimble for being a fat tire. If you're new to e-bikes as well, these helmets that we're riding are specifically for e-bikes and e-bike speeds. They're rated at 28 miles per hour. Because these can go a bit faster than a traditional bicycle, they need to be rated for higher speeds. Even going off that main trail that's sort of braided. This bike handles these rocks and stuff just fine. All right, I'll try my hand at single track. Take this slower than what Chris was doing. Ooh. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. This is all user error here. This is where the e-bike is shining because I can use the throttle to kind of continue at a slower pace without pedaling. When I pedal, my pedal's gonna be closer to the ground in these big rocks where I'm gonna be hitting. But if I have just the throttle, it keeps my feet off the ground, the pedals off of the ground and I can flow and concentrate more on bounce and riding a single track, which I'm not used to. <laughs> but I can keep them even instead of with one pedal down, hitting the ground. These e-bikes have definitely helped me build confidence in bicycles in general. <laughs> Going up the steep thing. No problems. That's so fun. In no way is this a class leader as far as specs. The forks could use a bit more travel and rebound adjustment, and we could always go with hydraulic brakes. But for the money, this bike is a blast. I think it's a good introductory bike as somebody who hasn't had a lot of experience uh, riding. It's comfortable and it's lightweight and uh, it's easy to use. And we had no problems with it straight out of the box. The thing that did come out of the box that was a bit disappointing was that it's only a two amp charger. So it's gonna be a longer charge time. 
If they increase that to a three amp hour, it would be better, but you could always buy one uh, aftermarket online. If you're interested in a budget e-bike that's still at the root of it, a fun mountain bike, go ahead and check this out with the link in the description. If not, we have other videos of other brands and bikes that we've tested, so stay tuned for those. Otherwise, thanks for watching.